how's it going? How's it going? You know, really, really want to watch the news or pay attention to the news. But I told myself, I'm not paying attention to the news. I think I might have a problem. I think I'm addicted to the news. With that being said, I'm going to continue this week by reading some more doom scrolling off of Korora website. Mainly because um, I want to. So, real life stories. A six year old handed us a note. His teacher had called my wife and I in for an emergency meeting and asked our son if he had any idea why. And he says, she didn't like my drawing, I did. Within the next day, and his teacher pulled the drawing out below and said, I asked him to draw his family and he drew this. Would you mind explaining? Not at all, my wife said. Family vacation, snorkeling off the Bahamas. <laughs> I mean, I can see how it could be uh, misinterpreted as something else. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you got the swimming suits and you got the snorkel and you got the bubbles showing the air. Let's see here. Did Harry inherit it more than Williams? Yes, I know. When the Queen Mother died back in 2002, she left more money to Harry knowing that William would eventually become prince and inherit the Duchy of Cornwall, a private estate value over $1 billion, which is exactly what happened when Queen Elizabeth passed away in 2022. So overall, William inherited quite a bit more than Harry. But this is one billion state is nothing compared to the 10 billion that the King Charles received tax free thanks to clever investments by the Queen into one of the world's most exclusive asset classes, fine art. The royal family has been investing a portion of their fortune into arts for centuries but the royals are far from the only billionaires who invest in significant chunks of their fortune in this emerging asset class. Billionaires like David Griffin or Geffen, Jeff Bezos, and Bill Gates were all vivid art collectors. The recently named the richest man in the world, Bernard Arnold, who's the CEO of Luxury Goods, Glomerant, LVMH, has exclusive or extensive collection of art. Plus, there's a long list of celebrities like Jay-Z, Oprah Winfrey, Steven Stilberg, Jack Nixon, Madonna, and Ellen DeGeneres who have all invested millions into art. The only problem is regular investors have always been locked out of the asset because it usually takes millions of dollars to purchase just one iconic piece. Is this one big ad? this one big ad for masterwork? Is, it, is this really one big? I think this is one big advertisement from master art. Either, either way, money's coming from art. My father quit on us and when I was five, mom remarried a few years later. She passed away in a car accident and when I was nine, both biological parents were gone before I turned 10. I was stuck living with my mom's new husband whom I only known for a short time. He was my real dad, but Randall isn't even my real last name. Steve Randall then showed me the meaning of real. He dedicated his life raising us. I had a younger sister and brother. When Steve met my mom, he was a successful attorney. He's a single parent dealing with the deep sorrow. He gave us many of his own interests to be there for me. He has taught me more about life than anyone else. Most importantly, being belief in myself, commitment to family and faith of God. I never made a major personal or professional decision without seeking his advice first. Graduated from college with his support, choosing my career path with his guidance. I'm a better dad because of his example. Anyone can be a father. It takes love, support, and encouragement to be a real dad. My last name is Randall. It means more than 
to me than any amount of money, possession, or corporate titles. There's several I admired, but my dad is my hero. Happy Father's Day this week. Dad, beyond grateful to be your son, Nate. Humanity. Didn't realize that they just had um, blogs on here. But that is a heartwarming um, story there. Let's see here. Awesome moments. Let's see, her car left for the first time in my life to take me to pick my car up from the dealership. Halfway through the trip, the lift driver got a call through the car regarding his car and it was out for repo. He took the phone off the car and told the guy that he can have it in two weeks. Well, I've been in his situation before and I knew that they didn't want to hear that being the car is already in repo status. I asked him a few questions, decided to call the bank and pay his account current to see that young man cry like he had me in tears. He didn't ask me for anything. I'm glad I could help him from the bottom of my heart. I'm not for show. I left him with this. Some of the best of us, including me, have been where you are. Keep pushing. Better is coming. Pray heart. It's a blessing to be blessed. Blessing in a position to help this young man. Hashtag favor. Credits to Nakia Hall. Interesting, interesting. Did not know that this is, was another side of coral. I mean, this is very heartwarming. I'm definitely glad I chose to do this. Let's see here. Good vibes. This is my son. About a year ago, I overdosed with him in my bed. Well, it was just a mattress on my living room floor. At two, he had to come visit me in jail. He beat against the glass, screaming and crying for his mommy. He started biting his nail after that. At three, he witnessed me getting hit in the head with a brick. My head split open. He rode with me in the ambulance. It scared him really bad. Like, holy crap. Holy crap. Holy crap. So you're at four. He was in car wreck with me. One of my many DUIs. I know this is going to have a happy ending, but good Lord, you put your child through that? Hopefully he's not as screwed up as you are. At five, my mother had to raise him most of the time. I barely even came home. At six, I lost full custody and I went to prison. He's 12 years today. He lives with me. He attends a private Christian church. He's on the honor roll. He gets prayed with every night and his mommy is there to wake him up for school every morning. I celebrate all of his accomplishments with him and he celebrates every sober birthday with me. I tell him how much I love him every day. He is so kind to the broken because we were once broken. He's truly so special. Thank you, God, for allowing me to be a mother and a sweet boy every day. The sweetest gift of my sobriety. Credits, Shay Walters. Dude, I mean, hopefully he turns out okay. Um, not something you want to raise your child in, for sure. So here, yesterday during my daddy's funeral possession led by the United States Marine Corps, my family noticed the man in his photo pulled over to the side of the road. Human's instructions. His hat was in his hand, and his hand was over his heart, honoring my father and our family as we passed by. His respect act touched my family and the entire possession so deeply. We passed many other cars along the way that, that simply went about their day. Since his license plate showed in the photo, my daughter did some digging, and we found him. His name is Ernest Borland, and he was also a veteran, U.S. Navy. When I messaged him privately to thank him for honoring my father, he said, It was an honor to show my respect to a fellow serviceman and their family. Please accept my prayers and condolences to you and your family for your loss. 
fair winds and the following seas, God bless. Thank you, Ernest, for your act of kindness and respect. Touch our family and friends very deeply, and we are grateful. May God bless yours and yours as well. Let's thank Ernest for his service and show him some love, law, y'all. Credit Rowan Wallace and Skeeter Auto Service, LTD of Texas. You know, us veterans, when we see a funeral going by, we probably would do that. It's probably one of many. Let's see here. What is proof that your karma exists? Oh, this one's going to be a uh, crappy one. In 2016, Abdallah Abdelaslam Baroth was a suicide bomber with a laptop full of explosives who boarded a plane from Somalia to Dallas Airline. He embarked as a disabled person and claimed to be on the trip for medical checkup. 20 minutes later after takeoff from Madagishu, Somalia at an altitude of 14,000 feet. Explosion occurred inside the aircraft. There were 74 passengers and 7 crew members on board. The explosion created this opening. He was the only one to be sucked into the opening. His intention was to kill all the passengers of the plane, but according to fate, he had to be the only one to die. The plane controls were not affected by the explosions, allowing the pilot to return the plane to back to the airport safely. Karma sometimes worked as if it's magic. Oh man, that's depressing, sad, and happy all at the same time. What are the few dumbest mistakes people make on the internet right now? Making a YouTube video or making a YouTube channel and try to post four times a week. Not knowing if it's actually reaching anyone. I mean, that's probably a mistake, right? There are tons, but obviously in mind, these are the worst. Not using an ad blocker. Uh, YouTube's about to disable most ad blockers in order to view their videos. But I'm pretty sure that the ad blockers are going to evolve after that. If you aren't using an ad blocker yet, I'm begging you to try one. I'm not exaggerating when I say it will change your life. A good ad blocker will eliminate virtually all the ads you see on the internet. No more YouTube ads, no more banner ads, no more pop-up ads, etc. It's incredible. Most people I know use total ad block. It's an ad. <laughs> it's an ad. It's an ad. For an ad blocker. It is $2.42 a month, but there are plenty of solid options. Ads also take a while to load, so using an ad blocker reduces load times typically up to 50% or more. You also block ad tracking pixels to protect your privacy, which is nice. And here's a link to total ad block if you're interested. Overspending when online shopping. You might be surprised at how often you're overpaying on Amazon and elsewhere. Big stores like Amazon know that no one has time to price shop through dozens of sites and there's no incentive for them to offer bargain prices. I totally hate the browser extensions. The fairy passion, but if you don't have Capital One shopping, install it. Yeah, do yourself a favor and grab it when you're shopping on online Amazon elsewhere. You're just one big advertising. I'm just saying. Let's see here. Good vibes. So I'm at my daughter's birthday dinner. The, the little girl's about two to four years old. So my daughter walked into the restaurant. While we were just enjoying the moment, the little girl runs down to where my daughter was, looks and smiles real big, and then runs back to her mom and dad. Shortly after, the daughter came back, carrying, carried by her dad, and her head is buried in his neck. The dad taps and my daughter with one shoulder says, My daughter thinks you're a real princess and wants to give you a hug. My daughter says, Yes. And the little princess gives her the biggest hug 
This brought the room to tears and cheers. They take a couple of pics and this little girl waves goodbye with her parents. The little girl's just a princess. Not a black one or a white one, but simply a princess. Kids don't have hate in them. They're taught it. Credit Steve White. I agree. Hate is a taught one. What is the most inappropriate gift someone instantly gave a teacher? I'm probably going to end with this one. I taught an eight-year-old for a while. One morning, a very sweet, sensitive type of little boy proudly presented me with a small gift box that he obviously taken great care to wrap and decorate. He insists that I open it right away. I was shocked to open the box to find a very large pair of diamond earrings that appeared to be in a set platinum. I'm an April birthday and my birthstones are a diamond. I also have a very spoiling husband who has gifted me with a lot of nice jewelries over the years. I could tell that these were definitely the real deal. I knew that there's no way that he had purchased these for me with his allowance. Yet he really wasn't the type of kid who would maliciously steal from his mother. Didn't want to embarrass him. I thanked him, placed him back in my desk drawer and that had a lock. At my lunch break, I called his mom and explained the situation. She was a realtor and worked near the school. She dropped by and confirmed that those were her diamond earrings. Ooh. I, of course, returned it to her. She told me that she would handle it gently at home. The next day, the same little boy came in with another box from me. He insisted I open it right away. It was a little angel figurine from the dollar store. He told me that his mom let him know that I was married and couldn't accept jewelry from him. And that he shouldn't have taken his mom's jewelry. She took him to the dollar store and let him pick out one item that he thought I'd like. He picked the angel to protect me from the bad kids. Had a few kids that year that acted out in class. I kept the angel on my desk for the rest of my career. Thanks to everyone who uploaded the sweet comments. The story happened back in the early 90s. This little boy is now an adult with two sons of his own. And actually ran into him a few years ago at a restaurant in the town I used to teach. And he's still sweet and shy. And he told me that his mom still tells this story too. That being said, that is my video for today. I may or may not have a video tomorrow. So I'm running out of ideas that's not news related. With that being said, leave a comment down below if there's another site you want me to read. Be more than will oblige by that. That being said, have yourself a wonderful day, morning, or evening.